We'll start this conversation, though, with a question from the mailbag. And I appreciate anyone out there who has mobilized to quickly give us ideas for content today. RB Roughnecks, how do you think the NFLPA will tackle gambling in the next CBA? Surely they will try to limit punishments for their players and set guidelines for offenses. And this is a good place to start because it it helps us all get on the same page about the power the NFL has in this subject area. When it comes to gambling, because it is an extension of the overall power to protect and preserve the integrity of the game, the union has no say whatsoever. The union has already conceded that the gambling policy is within the full and complete province of management. The union has no power. The union has no rights. And a year ago, when that first wave of suspensions arising from guys betting on other sports while they happened to be in the facility, even though under the rules, if they were standing on the street outside the front doors, it would have been okay. Somehow, taking your cell phone from the sidewalk where you can make legally a wager on March Madness, the NBA, whatever, and walking through the door transforms it into an affront against the integrity of the game. When that all first came up, that's when it became clear to me. The NFL makes these rules, and Chris Sims had a great idea. And he may be more right than he realizes. Because I said, if the NFL has full power over this, full discretion, why don't they just say, if you want to play professional football, you can't gamble at all? Why are you giving these guys the opportunity to, to get themselves in a jackpot in a bad way? I would never understood. My dad always said that. You're going to get yourself in a jackpot. What? Is that, is that jackpot good? Anyway, jackpot in a bad way. Why are you even creating this possibility? And Sim's idea, simple. You got a lot of rich guys, young guys, single, disposable income out the wazoo. You want them to bet. You want them to bet because you want them to lose. See, that's a, I saw somewhere someone arguing for greater freedom for the players to bet so they can participate in this new revenue stream. No, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. The way you participate in the revenue stream is on the house side. You get sponsorship money from the house because the house always wins. You own part of the sports book as every owner is allowed to do up to 5% of a company that operates a sports book. That's the dirty little secret that they don't talk about. They won't even tell us who the owners are who own a piece of DraftKings or FanDuel or BetMGM or this one or that one. You're not, they're doing you a favor if they tell you you can't do it. They're looking for suckers. They're looking for losers. They're looking for whales. You know what happens to a whale? A whale gets harpooned. That's what they're looking for. So why do they let players bet on other sports when they're not at the facility, not traveling on work? Because they want them to lose. These are whales that can be harvested for their blubber. So what will happen in the next CBA? Nothing will happen in the next CBA. The NFL doesn't have to do anything. The CBA is about give and take on the areas where the union actually has power. The gambling policy will be whatever the NFL wants it to be. And this is the only area where the NFL, having full discretion with no power by the union to tell them otherwise, does the players a favor. Where else do they do the players a favor? Hey, we're doing you a favor. We're letting you bet. We're doing ourselves a favor because we know you're going to lose. All right, so here's why the NFL needs to be concerned about what's happened this week. And I don't know how concerned they are. And I don't know how aggressive they're ever going to be in trying to find potential violations. But the Shohei Otani case, which came to light simply because they busted or they're investigating or they're on the trail of an illegal bookmaker in California, It turns out that his interpreter 
was betting with this bookie. And we still don't know whether it was theft. I saw yesterday, well, if it's theft, why didn't they file criminal charges? I don't know that criminal charges have even been filed against the translator if he stole four and a half million dollars. You would think if someone stole four and a half million dollars from you, you'd go to the cops at some point and say, hey, excuse me, I don't mean to bother you. I know you're busy with, you know, other things, but somebody stole four and a half million dollars from me. Do you think you could look into that? The whole thing still has layers and levels of questions, but at the core, if, 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 and I want to say if, because I don't need to get sued on top of everything else that I've gotten myself in trouble with today. If it can ultimately be proven that Shohei Otani was actively involved in this and that the interpreter was just the conduit for the betting, look, I, and I wonder how much time they sit around the league offices brainstorming all the ways that gambling can cause problems for them. But I guarantee you that there are professional athletes in every sport who are using family members and friends to be the ones who bet on their behalf, that they are bankrolling the gambling operation. They have some loose agreement they've come up with. You know, I'll put in the money. You are the one who makes the bets, run some of them by me. I'll be involved in it. I'll give you X percent of the winnings. You know, you do get into issues with Uncle Sam at some point. Who's going to pay the taxes on this? But first, you got to win. You got to win before you got to worry about paying taxes on it. Most of these guys aren't going to win over the long haul. Oh, you're going to have your periodic wins and give you enough of a dopamine rush that you come back and bet some more. And then you get to the end of the year and you add up your losses and your wins. And you're like, well, I don't got to worry about declaring any of this on my tax return because I lost. So I, I, yeah, I, it's one of those things where common sense tells us the attraction is too strong. The technology is too easy. All you got to do is go to the app store. If you're in a state where it's legal, you go to the app store, you put in the name DraftKings or FanDuel, you press get, it downloads, and off you go. There it is, right on your phone, right on, right on your phone, right with everything else, right there with Netflix and Instagram and, you know, whatever other app you have, it's all right there. So I have a feeling that this is going to be something the NFL only ever investigates if it falls into their laps and they have to do something with it. And here's one way it could fall into their laps. And I mentioned not long ago, and I know you're going to wonder, where the hell is he going with this? I mentioned the movie The Prestige, Christopher Nolan film. I probably mentioned it after Nolan won Best Director for Oppenheimer. The Prestige is an awesome movie, and I've since watched it again after mentioning it on the show. And I've heard from some folks who watched it and loved it. It's great. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. But there's a point that's made in there. I don't want to spoil any of it, but there's a character who gets involved in something that's going on, and the character realizes... I got a lot of power here. I know some things. I can screw everything up for this other character. I can start making demands. I can start asking for more money. Because all I have to do is tell the truth about what's been going on. See, that's the problem. Beyond the fact that you're violating the rules, especially if you're using a friend or a family member as a conduit to bet on football, if you play in the NFL, now there's no suggestion that Shohei Otani's interpreter has bet on baseball. And isn't, and isn't that, I know he worked for the Dodgers, but he's engaged in illegal betting anyway. I mean, the fact that he stayed away from baseball, doesn't that make you wonder if he really was betting for Shohei Otani? Who knew I can't bet on baseball or I'm going to get Pete Rosed? Anyway, if you're using a family member or a friend with legal gambling apps and they're betting on football, betting on your team, betting on your prop bets, especially if betting on the under. We'll talk about that in a second. But if that's what's happening, that person who's making the bets, a lot of power. And that person realizes how much power they have. When that person realizes the havoc they can create if so inclined, that may be a punishment far worse 
than whatever the person could do to the league because being the one who's on the wrong end of that kind of power and having to cough up a little more money or do whatever this person says because the person's eventually going to blow the whistle on you and get you in serious trouble, get you banned for life, potentially for a year at a minimum, or maybe for life. That's what I think is coming. I think we're naive to believe that that isn't going to happen eventually. We're going to find out about a family member or a friend who's been betting on behalf of a player, and that family member or friend got sufficiently disgruntled or sufficiently greedy that they went to the league office. Something happened to piss them off. The relationship ended, whatever it may be. It may, it may just end up being a former spouse who knows about it, former girlfriend who knows about it, somebody who was previously in an intimate relationship with the player who's mad about how it ended and knows that insert name of player has been betting through brother, cousin, friend, whoever. The other issue that came up this week as it relates to gambling, NBA, John Tay Porter of the Raptors, investigated because of two different games, one on January 26 and one on March 20, where he made an early exit. And we did talk about this a little bit because I did the whole Roddy Dangerfield. Oh, my arm, it's broken. You, you fake an injury and you leave early or you fake an illness and you leave early and your unders hit, your prop bets hit for your points your assists, your rebounds, your steals, your block shots, whatever you can bet over, under, on. And I have a feeling you can bet over, under, on anything. All your unders hit. So for Jonte Porter, who left early on January 26th because of an aggravation of an eye injury, and on March 20 left early because he was sick, his unders hit, and you throw on top of that suspicious activity, increased volume of wagers on the unders, starts to look fishy. The NBA is looking into it. Jonte Porter could have a much bigger problem than Shohei Otani. A much bigger problem. And this is where I think the greatest risk is. You know, we talk all the time about football. What can one person really do to affect the outcome of a game? I've mentioned in the past, and I still need to run a fresh link to this at an item on PFT, the initial episode of the PBS series Frontline from January of 1983 was devoted entirely to the connections between the mob and the NFL and the way that the mob has infiltrated pro football for gambling purposes. And there was a claim in there that one group got to coach and quarterback. I think it's coach, quarterback, and official. You get to those three. That's your Bermuda Triangle. You can really control the outcome of a game if you've got the coach, the quarterback, and the referee on your payroll. But beyond that, because it's still going to be difficult, if you're just talking about an individual player's prop bets, look at what happened when Bijan Robinson was sick on a Sunday morning and the Falcons didn't announce it. How many people lost their minds? How many people lost their money? Anybody that bet the under? See, anybody who knew about it, anybody who had that inside information that I don't think the NFL is ever going to be able to properly handle, hey, bet the under on Bijan Robinson today for every category because he's sick. And they haven't said anything because they don't want the Buccaneers to know. They don't feel like they have to disclose it. They found out to the tune of $100,000, which really isn't that much money. It's not much of a penalty. Anything other than taking away draft picks isn't going to get somebody's attention. That's the thing to watch. And that's why the NCAA wants all states that have legalized gambling to get rid of prop bets. Because it's a combination of two concerns. One, it's the easiest way to corrupt someone and get them to influence the outcome of the wager your own individual prop bets, especially the under. The other thing is, for the people who are making these prop bet wagers, it's another reason for them to get pissed off at the players who don't produce. I bet you to score more than 18 and a half points tonight. You stink. I'm going to harass you on social media. I'm going to make threats against you because you failed to deliver. This is why I don't like the prop bets. And I, I know that you will hear some... Draft Kings reads from time to time on this program, but I still can't keep my own personal beliefs out of this. I don't like the prop bets because it takes the player and turns the player into the dice on the craps table, the cards on the blackjack table, the little steel ball on the roulette wheel. They are even further dehumanized than they become when they're out there looking like cyborgs with the helmets and the shoulder pads, and they're a step removed from 
the humanity that the rest of us experience. That's why we try all the time to humanize the players as, mu as much we, as we can when they're viewed as just somebody who either does or doesn't make more than six and a half catches in a game that further dehumanizes them because they really are just the implements of whatever game of chance we've decided to play that night. So I, I don't like the prop bets. And I know that when football season rolls around, we'll do the Thursday night props over under how many passing yards is Patrick Mahomes going to have. We're going to do it. But I understand why the NCAA wants to get rid of it. And given this John Tay Porter situation, it's something the NFL needs to be very concerned about. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.